All right, my camera's a little fogged up today because it is humid as heck. Uh, back out here with the Dixon Zero Turn. Oh, it's really getting bad. I got to clean that lens. Back out here with the Dixon Zero Turn. Uh, this is the one I started a video on. This is part two of assessing it and seeing that it needed a belt and whatever. But since then, it's had some other issues that they were trying to fix, and they've actually gone backwards. Uh, the problem, the issue was, it was, um, it would run for a few minutes, and then it would just shut off. And it happened while I was testing it, as I returned it to him, and he knew about it, but I was trying to figure out what it could be. Had to leave it as is for that, that moment. Got back to it now. And now, if I turn the key, it doesn't do a single thing. Won't start. Won't crank over. And I apologize for my lens. It is stupid humid out. And it keeps fogging up on me. Once this camera gets stabilized to the outside temperature, I'll be okay. But I'm going to have to keep wiping it. So bear with me. We're not in a fog bank. It's just my lens. Uh, but anyway, they were monkeying around with it, jumping it, whatever. Um, trying to get it to go, it wouldn't go for them, and then at the point now where I need to diagnose where we're losing power, it will not crank over. So let's see what we have and what we don't have as far as power. So we've got an old round top battery thing connected to the battery at an angle and then the normal battery terminal there. So I'm just going to start with the battery itself to see what the voltage is sitting at. 12.4. I'm going to try to get you in the shot here. I just accidentally hit a wrong button there. So back to that 12.5. Let's go all the way to the cables which eliminates any issues with the clamps or anything else 12.6 all the way to the cables from positive to a ground on the tractor a little rusty 12.6 so the ground is cable is good all the way to the tractor and that cable is receiving power so let's go back to the starter solenoid and see what we got back there okay I just tested it somehow the camera turned off uh, from the motor from that wire to the ground of the motor it's 12.6 and I took the green wire off which is the solenoid and I get no voltage to, to make it crank so once we fix it it should be coming in on this green wire so there's several several little relays. There's one over here. There's one over by the key switch. I'm just going to inspect all the wires and uh, see if anything got pulled while they were working on it or if there's any fuse or breakers. Check those for continuity. I'm just looking at all the usual suspects. This is the switch that... That's the switch for uh, the brake has to be on for it to start. So I'm just looking to see if anything looks unusual there. Try cranking, no difference. Okay. Um, voltage regulator, any plugs. They got this kind of banded kind of tight down here, but I don't think that's causing any issues. It folds, comes up, and over to another relay here. Seat safety switch there. There is a circuit breaker here. That's probably more for the charging circuit. But I'm going to see if we got continuity. Just in case it is for the starting circuit. Across that. Set this. Oops. Got to change my lead. That'll beep if we have continuity, which we should if it's working right. Yes, I hear the beep. Okay, that rules out the breaker.
Double check by cranking, nothing different. I don't know if you have to be on the seat on this one to make it crank. As long as they think the, uh, as long as you got that um, emergency brake on, I think we're okay. Just looking for anything loose. When I got over there, he had this wire off, like they were looking at it, and he believed there was a problem with these two wires touching. But they're no longer touching. Pull this, look for some corrosion on the, this is the ignition switch, the bottom of it. Terminals don't look unusually corroded. Try it again. And actually now I can hear the fuel um, when I was clicking that. I could hear the fuel solenoid clicking on and off at the carburetor. So that's an interesting thing that we do have some power but not, it won't go to crank. I just have to figure out the cranking then because the rest of it has power then. Now what I'm going to do is probe around on these, figure out which one is supposed to be given power for the starter. When I turn that key it should give me power only when I'm all the way in the start position. So let me get on a good ground somewhere with my one lead and then I'll go with the other lead. That's the power coming in there. There I got 12.6. So we're looking good there. Now I want to see which one's switched. That one is switched. That's probably the fuel solenoid and obviously the light. The lights, that's the headlights. Let's see if the yellow one is the one that goes only when you crank. Yellow ones give me a weird reading. It can't be that one. Maybe white? Nope. Yeah, it's the yellow one. So we're giving out power to the yellow. So where does the yellow go? There's a couple right here. Let's see where that one goes. Just gotta pull them and see which one's the right one. It's this one. Okay, that goes up to the uh, seat switch. So possibly we do have to sit on the seat to even try to make this crank. This is gonna make things more difficult. Okay, so the yellow one just goes into the connector, loops, and comes right back. It's just making sure it's plugged in, I guess. So, looks like somebody's been playing and prying with this thing already. So if that's not all the way plugged in, we're not going to get continuity through there. I have suspicions Johnny Fixit's been here before me. Still won't crank. Okay, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna take that connector apart and check for continuity there. I'm gonna just make sure that both of those plugs have continuity to each other through that wire. Yes, so when it's plugged in, it will have continuity, which will give our power back to the yellow wire. So we went from the one to the other. Bring you back down here. All right, the other, only other one coming back down that is yellow goes to this relay. And what makes or breaks this relay, we'll have to find out. Okay, I'm back up here on the main panel again. If I'm not even giving power, 
how am I ever going to get it on the other end? Of course. So this relay has to come in. So I have to figure out what makes this relay come in. One of the wires from the seat switch it needs. That's that one. I'll try to make some sense of it. I'll bring you back. All right, I got you set up here. That's the wire coming out there. A minute ago, I had this on the wrong setting. Uh, but anyway, that's the wire coming out. We have full voltage coming out, sustained. So that's going out to energize the starter. But it's not making it to the starter. So it's between that point and the starter solenoid, obviously. next wire I'm testing here is the wire okay it came from the switch went to the sweet seat switch come back around and goes out to this relay and that is the hot and the negative most likely that's the negative comes from probably the PTO switch or some other safety so we're hooked up there let's see what we get Turning the key, full voltage. It is making it to this wire. Now I'm seeing if this relay is getting power. And what I mean by getting power is, is it getting the power to energize it? I'm on the positive and I'm on the negative. Let me turn the key. I am not. So this white wire that I'm attached to here has not got a ground on it and we need to find out why okay I'm just tracking the white ones there's a white one and a white one with a stripe I look here white one with the stripe is hanging out the back of the connector uh-huh Jenny fix it does it again they knocked the wire out of the back of the connector while they were playing around now I can begin the repair I was planning on doing today, which is find out why this machine runs for about five minutes and just completely shuts off. I have a couple theories. Let's test a few things, see what goes on here. So as I gave it back to him last time, I was running it, trying to make it fail because he already knew about the issue. And it ran for about five minutes and it just shut off. No backfires, no nothing. So I don't think we're get an intermittent loss of ignition a lot of times you get a backfire if that's the case in this case it seems like it's just running out of fuel well that's a simple diagnosis if you've seen these before uh, on the bottom of the that red wire is a solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor and it's an anti-backfire solenoid and if for any reason that loses power or breaks it will shut off the fuel and so I need to test he also mentioned the battery was dead so I need to test this battery to see if we're getting any charging during time it's on it does have the electric PTO so if you had just a little power in there you would run it for a few minutes the PTO would be consuming power if it wasn't replacing the power by the tractor charging the engine charging that battery um, you would possibly get a symptom like that where that solenoid would shut off because it just ran out of voltage so let's see if that's the case let's check to see if we're getting any charging on that battery and then we'll make a plan from whatever we find now I've been jumping on this while we were playing around because I wanted to make sure we didn't have a battery with just a surface charge and something was going weird with that let's see what this battery is sitting at by itself
second time today I had that on AC instead of DC. 12.5, uh, I'd like to see more like a 12.8 if I was thinking it was fully charged, but it doesn't really matter as long as it can start the machine. Um, that's plenty, and that should go up to 13.4, 14.6, somewhere in that range while we run it. So let's see if we start it, does it go up or down, and then we'll try it with the PTO on and off. It went up, we got 13.5 and climbing. Okay, so with the PTO off, it charges plenty fine, over 14 volts at at speed. That is more than enough. But let's see when I turn the PTO on, how much energy are we using? Are we using more than the tractor and the uh, regulators or wires or whatever can handle? Let's see. I hope you can see that screen when I was trying to show it to you. It was losing voltage during operation. That shouldn't happen if we have, well, a good battery would help, but that should not happen if we have a working complete charger system. So the next logical place to go, I mean, a, a, a good battery would, it would, it would matter, but we should still be able to charge that battery, any battery, good enough to keep the thing running. So I'm going to start with this plug here. This is the voltage regulator. This is a ground for it. And we're just going to verify that that ground is good because this is located on plastic. And check these wires. Make sure we don't... I'm going to clean up those terminals. Just a little bit of grass and there are no greenies. They're marked. They're marked AC, AC, can't read that one. Are they all three AC? No, one would have to be going out. That's got to be DC going out in the middle then. AC, AC, DC going out, maybe? Anyway, I'm going to clean those terminals, bring you back. So I got you zoomed in stupid close there. AC, AC, B plus, so battery plus. What's interesting is it comes out on a purple wire and then disappears into sorry got you zoomed in way too far purple wire down there disappears into the engine why wouldn't that be heading right to the battery um, also this is a heat sink for something is that engine related or is that part of the voltage regulator system you know what that is that's an oil 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 um, it's related to this oil filter it must be an oil cooler okay I just wanted to make sure there wasn't some rectifier weird thing this is this is the rectifier regulator so it should be coming in AC AC going out to the battery on that terminal so let's test what we have when it's running don't know if it's a good idea 
to test it when it's unplugged, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, I got you on AC voltage. I got you in each side there. Let me take my tools down so they don't get knocked off into those fans. I'm sure there's a specification, but 29 at idle and 52 AC should convert down to DC double, right? I'm going to make sure my battery's off while I'm t t connecting this, my key. Okay. Now I just want to see what we have coming to battery here, ground. If we're losing it somewhere or if this regulator is just not given enough, I will look up that spec to make sure that's enough to charge. Could be a lot of volts but low amps. Got the ground hooked up there. Hook up battery positive here. Let's see if I can get that probe in there. Got to go to the DC configuration again and that's about what our battery was at got you underneath the machine this is the uh, this is a wire for the brake clutch release, that's not it, but uh, here's the wires where I'm suspicious of, if any, would be these if they're chafed through and, uh, you know, short out instead of just engaging that clutch. Look okay up here. Just going to follow those back and see if I see anything that looks suspect. They go up into here, up into that harness. The blue one is on the outside here for some reason. I don't see anything wrong there. Okay. Just something, something else that I was suspicious of. Because the only breaker this has is right here. There's no other fuses, so it wouldn't know if a wire was shorting the ground unless the wire burned up. Okay, back out here with the Dixon Zero Turn. Uh, this time the humidity is way less. The temperature is less. There's just overcast skies. It's going to be a much more pleasant day than the last day I was trying to work on this thing. Let's do some more electrical diagnosis. In the last video I got it back up from not starting, not doing anything, not even cranking over found the wiring issue and diagnosed that when the PTO is on we are at a discharge. The charging system looked okay uh, by itself, was able to charge the battery. AC voltage was coming into the regulator, DC voltage going out, enough of it. But whenever I turn on the PTO I get nothing. And there was more. Later in that video or on or off camera, I can't remember, I believe that that PTO switch died because I wasn't able to get the PTO to turn on at all. So here's my theory. The PTO clutch or something in the PTO wiring, when I turn that on, is pulling so many amps, it is able to negate the whole charging system, which should be like 20 amps on this motor, on this color command, it's, I believe it's pulling as much power as the whole charging system can give because it's shorting out and I think it killed that brand new switch 
that we just put in in a previous video because it won't turn on at all now and I think that might be why but we have to do some further diagnosis to make sure we're replacing the right parts so what I need to test is the actual PTO clutch itself which is what I suspect is going wrong I think it's probably shorting out there's a, it's electromagnetic coil I believe when it gets hot it shorts out almost completely but it's sh it's pulling a lot of amps the whole time but then when it gets hot it completely goes out so my uh, amp meter that I have doesn't go up this high on DC current I, I'm expecting it to be you know 15 or 20 amps when it shorts out or more so what I've bought is I'm unpackaging it now that's the wrinkling in the background a regular good old-fashioned tractor amp, amp meter that'll uh, read 20 amps without blowing a fuse without doing anything so I'm gonna hook up an auxiliary power supply through this amp meter directly to the PTO clutch I'm gonna be testing only the PTO clutch not the wiring to it only the wiring plug that it has on it the clutch I want to see how many amps it takes to keep that energized and if that changes when it gets when you leave it on for a while when it gets hot well, let me show you the setup I've got I'm going to test the PTO clutch only um, I've disconnected PTO clutch plug power from tractor I have tapped in my wires to here I'm using power from a separate power source jump pack I've got it hooked up negative even though one of the wires is red it is negative and the other one's positive I'm gonna hook up the other wire here and we're gonna see how many amps that thing should pull no more than five amps um, while running so let's see what we get here more than 20 more than 20 did I get you in the shot there I was kind of sh kind of shocked to myself when I was looking at it 20 or more um, this thing max out maxes out at 20 and I'm pinning it so absolutely confirmed that the PTO clutch is bad it's pulling way too many amps the PTO clutch if you're not familiar this is it here this is its wires I'm just gonna make sure they're not shorting out on that metal rod that holds them I'm gonna pull them off of there in a minute here just to check them I'm gonna look over here this is zip tie holding its wires but I have a feeling it's happening internally and that makes sense why a 20 amp charging system couldn't keep a charge on the battery because this thing's pulling in excess of 20 amps okay now I've got the wires uncoiled from that metal piece that it could be shorting to let's try it in bare air I think we're gonna get the same thing but let me just verify completely pinning out a 20 amp uh, gauge so it's definitely the clutch itself it's shorting internally and uh, probably when it gets hot enough it uh, shorts even worse it's got to go okay so now I know the PTO clutch itself is using excessive amps and that blew out that brand new switch I'm not going to do any more diagnosis on that part because I'm just going to replace the switch and it should work got you set up here I have just quickly put the new PTO switch on there onto the wiring harness just want to prove that that old PTO switch was the issue so I'll get you zoomed into the voltmeter and I'll start it up If you couldn't read it 13.84 volts 
is charging, no shorts in any of the system, and is all the way to the end of the plug. I have that set up all the way down there with my meter. So if we get a new PTO, this one will run. So while I got you zoomed into our PTO, our new PTO switch, you can see there was wires that have overheated, shorted out to each other. And also you can see some overheating spots from where it was attached to the old switch, where it had burned so hot, the entire plug face is burned and not really connected and that thing is in there kind of crooked and it's all burned up so I got a universal harness and we're gonna fix this with the new connector etc got you zoomed in there on the underside of the operator station I'm just gonna take out the old burned up PTO switch and put in the new one And it goes in just the same way. So what I've got here is just a universal kit. It comes with the square, same same plug, wires, um, different colors. Like this one doesn't have a green wire in it, and this one, the original one, did. So uh, what I'm going to do is just leave them long on the one side and cut them short over here because we know there's heat damage so I'll probably cut them you know an inch away or so just to make sure they're all fresh I'm gonna do them one at a time so we don't get anything confused and take pictures beforehand so I don't get any wiring issues going back together okay most of the colors I had in the kit this one red goes to green uh, they're easy to tell two yellow, two whites, I mean one with the green stripe, this one doesn't have the stripe. And then I put all weatherproof connectors and I'll just shrink those down now and get ready to put them back into the connector. Okay, I've got all those waterproof connectors shrunk down and I'm just going to put back on the original loom and a couple of zip ties to hold the loom shut and we'll be looking like new. There we go ladies and gentlemen factory looking. I did use the loom on the uh, new kit that I got, the universal kit, because it's wider and they fit over those uh, connectors real nice, whereas the other one was a little narrower just to fit the original wires. So before I zip tie those up out of the way, I'm going to do some more work on this tractor. He wants these headlights to work. Um, we only actually have one light in the front to use. The other one is missing, but I want to get the power to there before I uh, button everything up that we're looking at here. So let's do some voltage testing there and see what we have and don't have. Okay, let's start testing for some power for those headlights. Now I've got, uh, got you attached to a ground. And I'm going to go from the ignition switch out, connected, now on, good. We got power going to the headlight switch. Now do we have anything coming out of? Let me go over here and turn the switch on. No. No power coming out of the headlight switch. So we need a new switch. Pulled out the switch, got it sitting there. It's just a standard on off switch. Any kind will do. Uh, this one is actually D shaped. So it doesn't turn. So it doesn't turn, it's, it's got a flat spot. So I might try to get the original part for that. If not, drill it out. On off, all we need. Uh, I'm just gonna check the rest of the wiring now. Got you down here at the front end here. I'm gonna be working right here. 
and I'm just going to go from a ground. I got the key switch on. I bypassed the uh, headlight switch with the wire. Let's see. Let me get that here. Yeah, we got voltage. So maybe just the other light is blown out and this one's just missing. They don't make them anymore, so we're just gonna have to get some universal something. But uh, let me just check both hot and negative to make sure the ground is there also, because right now I'm using the ground on the tractor somewhere else. Make sure all the wiring is good. Bring you back. Got you there. I think you can see that with the glare of the camera. Let's see. We got uh, 12.8 or 12.118, 12.16. So yeah, we got a, we got a ground and hot to this side. I'm going to go grab the plug off the back of the other one just to make sure we have power to both and then we know we only need a lamp and a bulb or two new lamps or whatever we're going to do here. Okay, and the other side was disconnected and it's got a bulb. I can see the filament floating around in there so it ain't going anywhere. Uh, it was a GE, I think 894? Yeah. So that could work to get that side going, and then we might need something for this side if he wants to do that, or if he's okay with just one, I have to ask the owner. I hereby declare this Dixon zero turn switch Wildwood certified. Thanks for watching.